This is what it all comes down to. The Olympic dream for Alana Yip depends on the next 30 seconds or so. Here comes Sean McCall. Competed in well over 100 World Cups, so he's been around an awfully long time. Sport climbing makes its Olympic debut in Tokyo, and trust us, even if you're a fan of the sport already, we promise you've never seen anything like this. That's because climbers were thrown a massive curveball in the form of a new competition format. Usually, climbers compete in either speed, bouldering, or lead disciplines, all requiring different strengths and strategies. But at the Olympics, athletes have to compete in all three events for one combined score. So Olympians like Canadians Alana Yip and Sean McCall will have to reinvent themselves for a shot at a medal. I hope you're ready for a Sport Climbing 101 lesson on this episode of Team Canada today. Hey everyone, I'm Andy. My shoulders are hurting just thinking about what these athletes have to do. The first step to understanding Olympic sport climbing is understanding the three climbing disciplines. Bouldering is just you and the rocks. There's no safety net in ropes or harnesses as athletes have to contort, shimmy, and pull themselves up the wall filled with awkward obstacles, big and small. Agility and flexibility are key as there are no straight lines in bouldering. No matter which way you're twisted, both hands have to touch the top rock. Easy peasy, right? Lead climbing is what the average person pictures when they think of rock climbing. Your task is to climb a line filled with harnessing points. The challenge is controlling your body with strength and coordination to reach points of the wall that are spaced further apart than bouldering. The name of the game is endurance and speed. Whoever gets highest on the wall within the allotted time is the winner. You fall, you're done. Speed climbing is what it says on the tin. Climbers have an arrow straight path to the top and a mano a mano showdown. Move over, Spider-Man. Here's how the winners are determined. Each climber will compete in all three disciplines and the final rankings will be determined by multiplying the placement in each discipline with the athletes achieving the lowest scores, winning medals. Most elite climbers specialize in one or two areas, but now excellence across the three disciplines is required to medal. So climbers have to become elite generalists. Here's Alana Yip on how this affects her Olympic prep. Today we're training in the Richmond Oval. That's my coach. And we're here before it opens, so we have the whole place to ourselves. As for COVID protocols here, uh, we have to wear a mask at all times, including when training. Um, social distance, wash our hands on the way in, on the way out of the facility, and complete a daily health questionnaire. When I heard about the new proposed format for Tokyo, initially I was a little confused, but then I realized why they did it. It was a little bit of a game changer because I was mostly a boulder and a lead climber, and I really had to focus uh, on speed climbing in the past couple of years to bring that up to a reasonable level. Now I have to prepare my fingernails for speed climbing training. I scrape them against the wall a lot, so I super glue and then tape them so that I don't bleed out of the ends of my fingertips. My best discipline has been bouldering. In 2019, I came to seventh at the World Championships, which was a highlight result for me. Recently, I've been putting a lot of work into my lead and speed, which is really easy because the Richmond Oval, which is quite, quite close to where I live, just opened up a world-class lead speed facility. I've done a lot of lead climbing in my career. When I was in the youth categories, we actually didn't have international bouldering events, so I competed a lot on lead. And speed is something that is still relatively newer to me. Hi, right, Solana, come on. I'm really excited for Tokyo. I don't know what to expect, really. I've never really been to a multi-sport games before, so everything's gonna be new and different to me. Uh, and I'm very excited to see how it all works. If relearning your sport wasn't enough, eh, let's throw a pandemic on top of it. Sean McCall's going to show us what training in a pandemic has been like, and one of his solutions was building his own climbing wall in a spare room. How high are his ceilings? Hello, you guys. My name is Sean McCall. Welcome to my sport climbing cave. Realistically, it is a bouldering cave because we have mats underneath me. It's 12 feet high, 
16 feet wide, eight foot vertical wall on this side. Did I build it pre or post pandemic? Well, uh, post, kind of right after it started, my girlfriend's stepfather said, hey, do you want to build a wall? I eventually took him up on the offer. It took roughly a month to build. Basically, we all did it ourselves. We put the 30 degree overhang in. We made it as big as we could. There is about $40,000 worth of holds in the backstock plus the climbing area. So I knew that it was gonna be a year of, I guess, everything. And so I invested heavily in it. It's been totally worth it. I love all the holds that I've gotten and I've gotten to build for the last year. If I had to, I could 100% be in here training only for the games. It is perfect for bouldering. I could do circuits. The hardest thing would definitely be speed climbing, not getting on the official speed route. But if push come to shove, I would sit in here for one year and train for the Olympics. Preparing for the games during the pandemic, it's been, it's been hard. I was in here almost every day during the really, really, really tight lockdowns and it became a little bit of a sanctuary. I could train, I could focus on climbing, I could a little bit forget about the pandemic for a couple of hours uh, and it became a little home away from home. I uh, also have a little bit of a workout area at home that I can train in, but this definitely gives me the capabilities to do the climbing portion of it. I can do hanging, campusing, lots of climbing, lots of building boulder problems because a lot of bouldering is mostly about problem solving and the circuits. So this is my cave. Hope you enjoyed the little tour. And I'll see you guys at the games. Now you know the Canadians, but here's CBC's Olympic analyst, Kamanda Jarzabiak, with who else to look out for. So what's the big story in the women's competition? Well, all eyes will be on 22-year-old Janja Gambrit of Slovenia. In bouldering, she won every World Cup for two years. In lead climbing, she's been on the podium for 36 of her last 40 competitions. So what about speed climbing? Well, she doesn't have to win speed in order to win gold, she just has to finish middle of the pack, and she can do that. In the quest for sport climbing's first Olympic gold medal, Janja Gambrit may be unstoppable. So who's the climber to watch in the men's competition? Check out Adam Andra of the Czech Republic. He's one of the world's best outdoor climbers. In competition climbing, he's currently ranked second in bouldering and first in lead climbing. So what about speed climbing? Well, he's only started training that in the last few years, but he's likely to come in under eight seconds. And while that's a few seconds off the men's world record, Adam Andra's strength in bouldering and lead could earn him the sport's first Olympic gold. All this to say you don't want to miss sport climbing. McCall and the men compete on August 3rd and Yip and the women on August 4th. Both events start at 4 a.m. Eastern time, so if you want to watch live, it's going to be an early morning. Rise and shine and see you then.